Thousands of years, men have considered it an act of merit to make a pilgrimage. In the Middle Ages, pilgrims used to set out from Western Europe on foot or on mule back, on dangerous journeys that led them all the way to the Holy Sepulcher in Jerusalem. These men are members of the League of the Sacred Heart, a fraternity of laymen who are adherents of the Roman Catholic Church. Their pilgrimage is to St. Joseph's Oratory, a famous shrine in Montreal. The date, Sunday, June 15th, 1958. Weather forecast for the day, mainly clear with high winds. Pilgrimage is a journey undertaken from religious motives to some place reputed to be sacred. St. Joseph's Oratory every year come hundreds of thousands of pilgrims. They come by Greyhound bus from California, by plane from Vancouver, on foot from parishes in Montreal. How did this place come to be reputed as worthy of pilgrimage? It all began with one man called Brother Andre. Sixty years ago, when this was a thickly wooded hillside, Brother Andre used to come here alone to pray to St. Joseph. Eventually, a little chapel was built in the woods dedicated to St. Joseph. Within it, reverently preserved, is the simple room where Brother Andre lived for 40 years. He was born in a small Quebec village. 
He received no formal education. At 25, he joined a religious order. He never rose to any rank of formal importance in his order. He lived the frugal, simple life of a lay brother of the Congregation of Holy Cross for almost 70 years. Yet when he died, his passing was noted in most of the world's newspapers. As you knew Brother Andre personally, what sort of effect did he have on you as a man? Well, like everybody else, I uh, believe this man was certainly a good man. That uh, he was very simple, very humble. He had uh, some human failings, as every one of us. But I personally have ever believed that, that mi this man had a mission, a special mission, and a mission which was quite extraordinary, extraordinary by the fact that he was absolutely devoid of uh, physical means. He was a small man, uh, thin, sickly, uneducated, I mean, uh, uh, bookish education. And still, this man, through all kinds of uh, trials maybe, had come to build up this devotion to St. Joseph because the main work, I believe, of Brother Andre is building up devotion to this saint who is the patron saint of Canada. By and by, people have come to call him, what they, they say popularly, call him a saint. Uh, he was a very good man who, who, in my opinion, put to advantage every quality he had to serve God, to serve his brethren, and also tried to correct whatever failings he had in himself. How did he start? Brother Placide of the Holy Cross Order can speak with some authority of Brother Andre, for he knew him for many years. Now in retirement, Brother Placide is a doctor of music and for 18 years was organist at the oratory. Now, most of the, most of the visitors up there are, I believe, pilgrims who go up there to ask from God through the intercession of St. Joseph and also the, uh, the intercession of Brother Andre in whom they have confidence, well, to ask for some small or big favor, temporal, spiritual, or other. In time, the little chapel in the woods no longer served the growing need. Now, built on the contributions of the faithful, rises the enormous oratory. An oratory is a place to pray. Each lighted candle is a symbol of a prayer made, and when the worshiper departs, it remains as a sign of his devotion.
Within the sanctuary is a relic of St. Joseph, which is venerated by the faithful. For the special purpose of the oratory is to further the devotion to St. Joseph. But the oratory is perhaps more popularly known as Brother Andre's shrine. And the man whose body lies buried in this chapel may someday be officially considered by the church as a saint himself. The prayers of many pilgrims are addressed as often to Brother Andre as to Saint Joseph. When people are praying at his tomb in the oratory, what do you think they are trying to do or get at? I imagine that they do exactly the same thing as I do myself when now and then I have a chance to go up there and kneel beside Brother Andre's tomb. I have seen him buried there and I know he is there. His body is there, of course, his soul, I hope, and I believe is in heaven. But uh, his body is there, and I am speaking not to the body, but to Brother Andre, who is still alive, uh, because uh, his soul is immortal, as everyone, every soul on earth. Well, here is what I do. I, as I know a new Brother Andre very well, I just speak to him plainly. He say, Brother Andre, you're here. Now you'll, you know I'm here. You listen to me. I would like you, please, to tell your great friend, St. Joseph, to ask from God to obtain me this and that and the other thing, a cure for my friend, uh, some, uh, some uh, little bit more of material means to do in this and the other thing. If it's a wife, maybe the cure of her husband, of her children, uh, whatever favors you feel that uh, are right in the first place, I'm not going to ask for anything wrong, I hope. And if these things are according to God's, uh, God's will, to God's almighty will, that's what I believe people come to do there at Brother Andre's tomb. Of course, uh, simple tourists, well, may be amazed to see people kneeling there. You see, well, this man is dead. There's... No, but uh, the body is there, but the soul is, is alive someplace. You have to use the material things under your hand to, uh, uh, as means to elevate your soul towards God. Why did he tell people to rub themselves with St. Joseph's medal? Well... St. Joseph's medal or St. Joseph's oil. These things uh, are material objects, of course, without any, any connection uh, with, uh, uh, phys with uh, any physical means of curing or doing anything. It's the St. Joseph oil is just plain ordinary olive oil and a medal, well, it's a medal, that's all. Now, Brother Andre told people to use the metal and the oil just as means, as a means of having them think about Saint Joseph and about God. In another way, in other words, it uh, it's the way of uh, of inspiring faith into these people. When the tide of people first began coming to this hillside to see Brother Andre many years ago, many came because they believed he might help cure their physical infirmities through his special devotion to St. Joseph. Ever since, on Wednesday, 
a day specially dedicated to St. Joseph, the sick and the afflicted have been coming to the oratory. They come in the hope that suffering and weakness may be alleviated. Ever since the miraculous healing of the sick by Christ himself, the Roman Catholic Church has believed that where physical resources have failed, a cure may still be possible through faith and the intercession of the saints with God. The monstrance with which the sick are blessed contains the consecrated host revered as the body of Christ. The journey to the oratory is undertaken by most pilgrims for a reason that lies behind all religious pilgrimages anywhere. A particular place comes to have a special distinction 
because of a person believed to be closer to God than most others. A person whose influence is even greater now than when he moved about in this place among the living many years ago. I'm a brother of Holy Cross just as he was. We were living together and uh, I believe that's only after his death that suddenly you realize that you have been living with a very extraordinary person as the multitudes who came to see him uh, from uh, the 7th of January to the 12th of that same, the 6th rather of January to the 12th when the, after his death, when he was uh, in the church there for people to come near his tomb. The hundreds of thousands who came there and uh, waited for hours, for hours before being able to get near his body. Uh, when you see a thing like this, I, I witnessed all the, this extraordinary week with amazement, with awe, with scare, I should say. Uh, on the Sunday during that week, I went up to the top of the monastery. It was nice weather for once because uh, most of that week was terrific. Sleet and ice and, oh, extraordinarily bad week. But on that Sunday, it was, uh, we had a nice sunshine. I went, went up to the top of the, of the monastery and then I saw the people there, massed, just waiting there and anxious and silent and praying and mourning and uh, affected uh, personally from that death and from that mass of people, I have had the impression that here we had a spiritual atmosphere so dense, so intense, that it was just, we just could cut it in slices and there you had it to be served as a physical thing. Uh, I had such an impression uh, another time in my life in Lourdes. Uh, people know about Lourdes and those who have been there surely will testify to the same thing, that the faith of the people there, their confidence in God, uh, their, the intenseness of their prayers and their, their disregard for whatever else is going on around them, this makes up for an atmosphere uh, which is, in experience, absolutely unique in one's life. And there you know definitely and without any doubt that there is God and the Spirit of God is uh, wandering over these masses. <laughs> the creed, the ritual, the ceremonial of the Roman Catholic Church have not changed essentially in 1,500 years. At any moment, somewhere in the world, the ancient ceremony of the Mass is being celebrated. The Church doesn't change. The places where people come to bear witness to its faith do change.
What does it mean, this brief life of man, is the question asked through the ages. All agree, at least, that the life of an individual is to be compared to a journey. The journey of our life, Dante called it. The Roman Catholic Church believes that Holy Communion is to be thought of as spiritual nourishment for that spiritual journey which is more important than any other aspect of man's existence. Life is a journey, but a journey to where? For what? All religions and all men, each in his own way perhaps, have sought the answer. And most have found an answer in some form of faith. In the words of the apostle, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. <laughs> 